there's a lot of years where it's the starving artist here, you know what I mean? Where we're, where we're just starving to death, not making much money. But to give you an example of this, without taking too much of your time here, suppose that you were interviewing Jay Leno right now, or you were interviewing Jerry Seinfeld, or any of those guys, and you ask them, how did they start their career? They would tell you, open mic night. That's the only way you can start. See, it's a very unique business. It's not like you can go to school and get a diploma and now you graduate from a comedy school. You can't, it's not like being, being trained as an electrician or a plumber or a mechanic, you know. So you just start that way. As an example, you know, when I first met Tim Allen, we all know who Tim Allen is, right? Oh, yeah. Home Improvement. The home Improvement guy, okay. When I first worked with Tim Allen, Tim Allen was the feature act. There's always an opening act, a feature act, and then the headline. I knew Tim Allen when he was making 600 bucks a week. Wow. And, 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 uh, and Tim Allen, for the people that are not familiar with his stand-up work, he was an incredible comedian. Incredible comedian. And so was Jay Leno. You know, I did a whole week of shows, Tuesday through Sunday. I was a feature actor at that time, and Jay Leno was the uh, headliner. And uh, Jay Leno was a class act. There was a place across the interstate from the punchline, a stage house called the Beast Cellar. He was open at 3 a.m. So on the weekend, after the show, he would take me in the opening act to that steakhouse and pick up the tab and give us all kind of advice. And then I got to hang out with uh, Stephen Wright for a whole week in Oklahoma. And uh, Jay Leno came to Oklahoma to do a big city sort of thing. And me and Stephen Wright and Jay Leno went out to dinner. So a lot of those guys, uh, if you think about Bob Newhart, most people think, well, that's because of that sitcom he had. But Bob Newhart, was on the road a lot of years as a strict stand-up comedian. And it, like Ray Romano of Everybody Loves Raymond, okay? When I first met him, he was a, a club act. He worked at comedy clubs. So that's what I'm saying. You have mm-hmm. to start somewhere. So you usually start at the lowest pay. <laughs> uh, you know, you don't pay, you don't make much money. We you just hang on and work hard, and things can happen, you know. Yeah, so, so many of the fun. big entertainers nowadays started out as comedians. I mean, David Letterman, Steve Martin, okay. Eddie Murphy, almost all of them got their start in stand-up. Exactly, you know. And some of those stars went on to be just superstars and sitcoms. And i never become a superstar, but I've always had a very, very successful career. I've been a lot of places and met a lot of people. And luckily, I don't want to brag, but usually I can sell out most of my shows. People still show up to see the show. And I think one reason they keep showing up to see my show is because my show is a completely family-friendly show. Any age group can come to my show, whether you're 12 years old or 18 years old or 88, you know. And I make sure that the show is hysterically funny from beginning to end. There's no profanity and there's no politics. I refuse to participate in current events. That's something I do not do. Because my philosophy is people watch the news 24 hours a day. They watch the news all the time. They can stay home and watch the news. I think when people go to a comedy show, and my comedy show usually lasts an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes. What they want to do is get away from the news, get away from that negativity, and show up and for a couple of hours just have a good time and just laugh and enjoy themselves. They don't need a comedian lecturing them on what politician we should vote for. 